Yet the, we're going to start by taking, having a conversation about binary files. This is going to finish up chapter 12. We're going to spend a day talking about recursion. And then we have an extra day to talk, I guess, about the final. But today we're going to talk about binary files. And what is a binary file? We're going to take a look at um, two sections, 12.7 and 12.8. And we've worked with text files up to this point. And in a text file, the data file for a text file, we could open it with pretty much any kind of text editor. And if you remember back in your Java class, you could create a text file or open it up and look at it even within JGRASP. So any kind of text editor works. But we're gonna look at something today where it's called a binary file and it's gonna store it based on its ASCII number. And the way it can do that is everything that we do, we're gonna store it as its character version. So if it's a char, that's easy, we can store it as a character. If it's a string, if it's an array, if it's a, anything that we're gonna do with binary files, we would have to recast it in order to be able to store it in a binary version. Now, you're gonna open up some binary files and be able to look at them and distinguish some things and say, okay, some of them you're gonna open up and you're gonna see smiley faces and all kinds of goofy things. But we're gonna take a look at how it works today. It's a little bit different. And I'm going to just go through some of the stuff that was in the code listings. And the first one is we're going to look at how to open a data file so that I can write to it. And that's when we do the iOS um, out. And then we're also going to include one that's iOS binary so that it knows to store it, and store it in binary. So when I want to store something in binary, my syntax is going to be file.write. And you notice that letter, if I put a data type in there, it would be char letter. So this is the address of the letter that I want to write to the data file. I also need to follow it up with size. And there is a function that's out there called size of, that will determine that this letter is of type char and it needs to be stored in a two block byte, okay? So again, I'm gonna write the address and then the size. Well, what if I wrote a different example and I said file.write and this time data, but data is actually an array of characters. Okay, so this is a pointer to the array because it's just the array name. But you notice now I'm gonna store the size of data. So it's gonna have a predefined size so I know what to store. And as I said, it's all about the char. Okay, you typed in code listing 1213. And this was an example of what's going on here where you're getting it set up to send it as binary, and you went and you wrote it, you closed it, you open up and read it, and did any of you click on it to see what it looked like? No? Okay. What do you mean? Um, so you created a file called test.dat right here. Okay, if it doesn't exist, it creates it. If it does exist, it moves the pointer to the beginning. So it starts writing at the beginning. It's getting ready for output and you're gonna store binary in it. So when you ran code listing 1213, a test.dat file should have been created. That was done in the first part. The second part was reopening it this time for input, letting it know that it was definitely a binary file you're reading in the data. Again, you need the size of. And so did anybody open up test.dat when they did code listing 1213? Someone is now opening it and they're about to share their screen because we're coming down the stretch. They have an 89.1% average and they need to suck up a little bit down and so they're like yeah i'm going to share my screen real quick and all of a sudden i see 
I see it's a race, not for everybody. Some of you just don't care. So you're going to throw your hands up in the air. Peter, Peter has the program and he runs it and compiles it. And wait a minute. Go ahead. Oh, uh, it's Peter. not going to show the right. It's not going to show the, uh, the it, output. Well, once you run it, there should be a data file. Yeah, there's that. Yeah. That's all good. But now somewhere it's stored test dot dot. I'm looking to see what test dot dot is. There's test and and there it goes. And and there it is. Right here. Yep, it's a data file. If you open that. Do, 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 do. We could have just opened with notepad, yeah. And it actually stored it with the ABC like we were talking about. Now, not all will, but some will and some won't. Okay, good. Stop sharing, Peter. Thank you. All right. Sometimes we're gonna be writing data other than char. Like I said, it could be an array of char. It could be an integer like 65. So all of a sudden, I'm now gonna create a pointer and pointer is gonna to point to this address of X, but I'm gonna do this reinterpret cast to turn it into a char. So it's a pointer to a char at this address. So 65, I know is an integer and it's four bytes. So somehow it's gonna to have to convert it to be two chars, two characters, da 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 And when you did this, this was code listing 214, where again, you have another file from the code listings. You're getting it ready. This time it's called numbers.dat. You get it ready for output binary. You're gonna write in everything from this array and close it, and then you're going to read it all back in. But once again, my question is, what does numbers dot dot look like? Will Peter be sharing his screen again? Will some of you go, I can't even get this because I didn't do the code listings? Yes, there are two of you. Fine, I'll do it again. Well, Peter's doing it again. There's the, pro oh, there was a withdrawal for him. He wants to withdraw from my class. No, I don't. You can't do, well, you can't withdraw anymore at this point. He clicks, he compiles, he runs. He gets the program, it works, he's happy. He's gonna stop sharing and go find that data file. Stop sharing and reshare. Go Peter. I'm glad I'm having fun today. It's right here. Yep. Oh. Ooh, all right. So now this is a whole different story, isn't it? Okay, it's not as nice as, char as characters were. And how often do we really work with characters? We work with the other things. One of them is going to be ints. We work with ints. Okay, so thanks, Peter. We have that in mind. Peter stopped sharing. And what you really didn't have to get into was, what if I now said, okay, I want to work with um, structs and I want to store a struct. Well, code listing 1215 starts to get a little long, and I don't think I had you type this one in, but I did provide it for you on D2L. And if you take a look at this, I'm getting a file called people.dat. Who are the people in your neighbor? People.dat, I'm getting it ready to write. And I have all this input. And when I get down here, I'm going to write a person. And what is a person? A person is a variable of data type info, which is a struct I create. So I want you to go to D2L now. 
see if I gave you 1215, which I think I did, because we can do binary files for all these because it's going to require less memory. It's going to require less translating. This is raw data. It's going to make your programs run faster once you learn how to do it. And you can make it secret code. So no, you could send secret code files this way. So go and, and find that on D2L and load it up. And let's see what that data file looks like. So who are the people in your neighborhood? In your neighborhood. That data file is probably gonna be in your download folder. People dot that. In case you're wondering, I did just draw it again. Okay, good. So you have some information about these binary files and now you wanna practice it. All right, so I have a data file that I give you on D2L, all right? I want you to convert this character file to find out what the secret message is. So you need to be able to read it in. The problem is, I think I added one or subtracted one to each character's binary before I made it a binary file. So you're gonna to have to make that correction so that you can translate the top secret message that I provided for you. So in D2L, there should now be a, a binary file. And I know curiosity will kill the cat. You'll open it and you'll try to look in it and you'll go, oh yeah. I kind of already know it's not going to make sense because he told me that the characters are off by one. So after I get it and I'm able to read them in and everything, I have to make an adjustment of somehow or other changing a D to an E or changing the D to a C or something so that I can uh, read what the secret message is. <laughs> 